Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah. Welcome to come on. Thank you, thank you. 今回は学習経験者インタビュー編、くもんの今を伝えます。くもんレポート。アメリカ出身、ギタンジャリーラオさん、17歳。11歳の時に水道水から鉛を検出する装置を開発すると、その後も次々に発明を繰り返します。アメリカで最も優れた若き科学者に選出されるほか。タイム誌初のキッド・オブ・ザ・イヤーに選ばれるなど今世界から注目を受けているイノベーターですそんなギタンジャリさんの活動の根底にあるのは幼少の頃から行っていた苦悶式にあるのだとか大の日本好きでもあるという彼女にお話を伺いましたこんにちは<笑> This is my second time in Japan So about five or six years ago So we were in Tokyo for some time and then we went to Kyoto and then Niko and then Kamakura、um, for about a week or two、uh, during my spring break in school. I wanted to go to Hakone for a really long time. I'd seen a lot of travel vlogs of it. Big thing is, I wanted to go in those like, cars that go up the mountain. Uh, on like the cables、uh, and take a lot of pictures. I am the biggest fan of onigiri that you will ever meet.、Um, any, you know, I, pickled plum onigiri personally is my favorite. I love Japan. I think、uh, the big thing for me is the first time I came here was how forward driven it is as a country, right? You're looking at clean economy, sustainability. That's like big things that are very, very common in Japan that isn't as common in the US. 水道水から鉛を検出する装置、鎮痛薬依存症の早期診断装置、いじめ防止アプリと幅広い分野で発明をしてきたギタンジャリさん。その活動の原動力は But yeah, when I was 15, I was coming up with all sorts of kind of like Small devices and like gadgets. I was just playing around, right? Or I like built small gadgets. Actually, not even 15 when I was, since I was like five or six. And I was just thinking about what I could do to help solve problems in my community. So, problems that I was passionate about. And I wanted to look at solutions that I could build that could help solve all of these problems.、Um, it's very different from how other people think about problems, is I always find the technology or the solution first. And then work back to the problem. So I see a technology that I'm extremely passionate about, and then I connect it back to a problem that I'm also passionate about.、Um, and that way it creates a very easy kind of tie between a problem and a solution, which is you know, a novel and new way of thinking that not a lot of people use. So. But I think like, a big part of what science was for me is first it started with like, the very basic science we learn in school, right? Biology, physics, chemistry, everything we learn in school. But from there, it kind of turned into、uh, combining science with kindness. Ever since I was you know, five or six years old, I was playing the piano at、uh, hospitals and old age centers. And so I always had this idea of like, Making people happy, right? Putting a smile on people's faces. That was like a big dream of mine, a big goal of mine. But soon as I started to learn about science and realize the power that science has in school and outside of school, I started to combine the two. And I always used to tell my parents and I always used to tell my teachers that in the future when I grow up, I want to use science for kindness. That's what I want my job to be. Mokka, Gitanjari san ga m e d a s t e i r no wa AI gilts o kushi s t a i d e n b i o no kai seki da so d e s ところで、同年代の子供たちのようにゲームをしたり、外で遊んだりはしていなかったのでしょうか。Oh, I also played a lot of video games. <laughs> I still play video games. It's actually very difficult for me to identify, you know, like why I ended up doing what I did.、Um, I went to a STEM school. My school focused on science and technology more than other schools in the area. And so, through that,、uh, I had more of a scientific background.、Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, I still was very much like a kid, right? Like, I played games, I hung out with friends a lot, and I still do. And I think that's a big part of why I am who I am, is because 
my passion and what I really loved doing was solving problems, right? A lot of my friends were competitive, like athletes. Um, and so they were like running full time, dancing full time. Um, a lot of my friends were um, like really good at like building apps. Right? But for me, my passion truly was in solving problems. My friends supported me, my teachers supported me, my parents supported me. So I made it a lot easier. Um, so it wasn't in the way that I was different um, in the way I acted or what I did for my friends, but everyone just had a different passion uh, in high school uh, and even before that in middle school. So I did Kumon for about seven or eight years uh, since I was three years old. I did it in both math and reading and um, I've been involved with the Kumon family ever since so I still work with them. I'm not in the program itself but I work with Kumon North America and so I speak at their uh, conference that they did, their, their uh, North America student conference and their teacher conference. I spoke at both. You know, constantly keep myself challenged, right? Give myself something to do uh, outside of just the simple math that I was learning in school. Um, but from there, it turned into this thing of teaching me this idea of dedication and commitment to the work that I was doing. And so that's why I think I stuck with it for so long. Um, I was always ahead of my class. Um, and it pushed me forward at a very young age. And while it wasn't fun all the time, right, and I'm sure any kid will tell you that, it taught me so much that I didn't realize until years later. And as part of Kumon, uh, you know, every year I was going to those ceremonies and being given trophies. And so it was like mod added motivation for me. Another thing Kumon taught me was time management. I always had you know, three or four page math packets that I was doing. Um, I was doing them on the plane, I was doing them in the car, I was doing them everywhere. Um, in a similar manner, I still do homework on the plane, homework in the car, I do homework everywhere as well. Um, so I think Kumon taught me a lot about you know, how to manage myself, how to manage my time, the importance of dedication, diligence, commitment to any project, to any idea. Um, and it, it gave me a, like a new sense of how to think and how to think creatively as well. The Kumon teachers were a very, very big part of my childhood, right? I saw them almost as much as I saw my school teachers and my parents, right? Because I was at Kumon and I was able to, you know, much more than just a Kumon relationship with them. I was able to see all my Kumon teachers because I moved to three different places. Um, so I was able to see the different Kumon teachers. and. Um, you know, the biggest thing that I've learned from them was um, how passionate they are and how their, their connection towards the students and their patience um, and the passion that they have for teaching and seeing students learn was uh, something that I always appreciated in all of my Kumon teachers. All of the Kumon teachers had a personal tie with me and um, I still, you know, once I got into university and once I you know, applied, I still updated every single one of them about my mission and my path just because they had that much of an impact on my life. So. I was always that kid who was asking an unnecessary amount of questions, right? I was very, very curious and I was thinking about the world around me all the time. But I always had a lot of teachers who told me that they believed in me to go out there and do big things and change the world someday. And I stuck with that to my heart almost every single day. Gakkouに行く方々、研究活動を行ったり論文を読んだり、またワークショップに参加したりと忙しい義丹じゃりさん。寝る間を惜しんで活動しているのでしょうか。I sleep a nice eight hours every night, eight to nine hours. My parents will tell you I will never let anything cut into my sleeping time. I take my sleep very seriously. And I think that's part of why um, I'm able to work for so long and do a lot of things is because I've taken my sleep very seriously. Actually, a big thing for me is I uh, want to start a biotechnology company. 
I again I was talking about ge like genetics and then AI somewhere between there I um, want to create a company with that but another big thing is I want to start libraries and maker spaces it's like uh, libraries and workshops in uh, countries with less opportunities right so people in Africa who don't have the same resources uh, I already started doing that but I want to help with more fundraising there um, and hopefully even starting small schools there as well I think the biggest thing for me is to take risks right it's very easy to do what you're comfortable with uh, but what's different and what people will want to see is those who are going outside of their comfort zone right so take risks try new things uh, because I wouldn't be here sitting talking to you if it wasn't for the risks that I took across the way, right? My biggest message to Kumon students is that there's nobody stopping you. So feel free to dream big, bring your ideas to life. There's so much more to Kumon that comes to yourself. So time management, diligence, commitment, Think about the future and think about everything that you want to do. So go ahead and do those packets, it's important. <laughs>